I've got a feeling I'm going to massively regret this one. So I picked up another Nintendo Switch Lite off eBay. I'm probably going to hate this one, but at the same time it might be quite fun. Um, now this is the listing here. So as you can see they were too lazy to even put a picture on, which should raise some alarm bells straight away, but um, I only paid £48 for it plus £5.20 postage which I thought was quite a good price. So I was prepared to take the risk. Uh, the description states that it is a Nintendo Switch Lite 32 gig, aqua teal, not gray. Well, obviously, then why list it with the gray picture? I don't know, anyway. Uh, one of the Joy-Cons has snapped off. It was still usable, but you can purchase a new on, on eBay with all fitting tools for about £7.50. I watched a video on YouTube that showed you how to do this. Right, so it sounds like they've tried to repair the one of the Joy-Cons and and failed. Um, Joy-Cons? I presume he means analog stick. Um, I just hope he didn't watch one of my videos because that will probably have made him break it even more. But anyway, when you turn the switch on though, it only displays a blue screen. So it's got the blue screen of death, which I don't remember reading when I purchased it. And I put the bid in, so oops, console for all right. Okay, we get the we get the idea. So I've obviously taken it out of its uh, its packaging, and it is just a squashed up box. And then we've got a quite a nice actually um, case for it, which wasn't zipped up. And there we go. Now. This is the first time I've looked at this. You might not believe me, but this has been sat in its box. Um, so obviously the analog stick there is the one that he's referring to. We've got a crack here, which I've seen a few times before around the USB-C port. We've got a few scratches on the screen, some scuff marks down here. I mean, overall, it doesn't actually look that bad. First things first, let's plug a charger in and see if it uh, is drawing any any charge. I suppose. Okay, here goes. Oh, there we go, there's the blue screen. Well, it is, it's 5 volts and it's um, 0.47 amps. Okay, so then we can confirm that we've got the blue screen, so let's. Um, Let's take it apart. Let's have a look what's going on. Okay. So the water damage indicator has not gone up. There's a lot of hair in it. How does how does all this hair get in here? That's the question. It's like dog hair or cat hair. Right. Right, so that's the main board out. Again, it's super clean on the back. One thing that does look odd is this USB-C port. It's slightly misshapen. There we go, you can see it's... Um, it doesn't look quite like the right shape, does it? I don't think it's just the, the, the shield on the surround of it, but... Pins... I think the pins look okay. Okay, right, I'm going to get my microscope out and we're going to have a look 
around this board, do a physical inspection, see if I can see anything obvious. But like I say, it's super clean, so I very much doubt there's going to be anything. But it's worth looking. And this is my new microscope. I haven't actually tried this one out yet. It's um, slightly better than than the cheapo one I was using previously. Um, so I'm hoping it's going to give clearer images and it will help me as well. So let's give it a go. Oh wow, yeah that's ten times better. <laughs> that's incredible. Right, let's start recording that. <clears throat> okay, well, let's look at the quality on that. It's so much better than that other one I was using. I've just recently done a an unboxing video on this microscope. Uh, but I didn't want to put it on the channel because obviously it's not... It's nothing to do with what this channel is about. So I've put it on my second channel that's got two subscribers, which is really good. Uh, w one of those is me, uh, um, and I don't know who the other person is. Might be my mum. But yeah, I'll put a link to that if you want to check it out. If you're interested in this microscope, I unbox it and I put it together and I give it a quick test. But well, this is the first time I've used it. And it's, wow, it's great. If I see anything in this, I'll, I'll obviously come back to it, but I'll probably fast forward through it. Look at all that hair. Look at it. Well, unfortunately, there's um, there's nothing immediately obvious there. Like I say, it looks really, really clean. I'll just have a quick look on the other side, but I think it's probably going to be a very similar story. There you go, look at that, that's the USB-C charge point. Really doesn't look very clever at all, does it? I don't understand how that's happened. Yeah, it does look like it's just the, the surround that's damaged. Right, I'm just going to check around the place for some obvious shorts uh, around the chips. See if we've got any capacitors that are short into ground when they shouldn't be. Oh my god, straight away. Oh no. <laughs> I thought that would have been too good to be true. Okay, so I think that is the charge chip. 
And there doesn't appear to be any shots around that. Right, so we've got this um, minefield of capacitors and whatnot underneath the uh, the main chip. I'm just hoping that. Uh oh. Okay. I think we've got the problem. Not all of them are shorting, but but quite a few of them are. Yeah, pretty much all of them are. Right, so it's the main chip, as I suspected, which is what causes the blue screen of death, I believe. Right, I was really hoping it would be something else and not the the main CPU on this, but but it is, by the looks of it. Uh, I don't I don't think there's anything I can do to fix it, but so I might just have to use this board for as a donor board. But what I'm going to try and do is get this surround off and just have a look underneath. Since I'm 99% sure that the problem is the, the NVIDIA GPU, I figure I might give a reflow a try. I've, I've got nothing to lose really, because it, it's not working. I'm not going to be able to reball it, that's way above my skill level. Um, so I figure I'll, I'll give it a reflow a try. You, you never know, I might get lucky. And if not, then I'll be using this for spare parts. I do still have another one of these to work on and I've also still got a yellow one from a previous one that um, that had problems so I could probably revisit that as well. So for what it's worth I'm just going to put some captain tape to try and protect the plastic connectors and such like around there. Right there we go, captain taped up, zoom in. I don't know whether this will make any difference, but we're just going to add some flux sort of around it and hopefully that will get underneath it and maybe help reflow the balls. I've got no idea. I'm just making this up. Just in case you didn't already know, I've never, never done this before, so... This is the first time for everything, and this is my first time for this. I don't really know what temperature to set the heat gun to, but I'm going to go with 400. See what happens. Right, I really don't think that will have made any difference, but like I said at the start, it's, it's I've got nothing to lose, so it doesn't look like I've done any damage to any other parts of the board, but I don't know whether that was hot enough, it was at 400 degrees, is that the right temperature? I don't know. Um, it didn't seem to move, it didn't really do a lot, and I, I was on there for a, just over three minutes. So... Anyway, we'll see. 
I'll um, wait for it to cool down, then I'll clean it up with some isopropyl alcohol, and then we'll give it a go. Okay, so I've just gone on the other side of the chip. Just I'm going to see if those shorts are still there. I'm guessing they will be. Yeah. Yep, yeah. so that hasn't made any difference. Shall I try it again? Why not? And I'm going to crank the heat right up this time. Okay, so now we're at 480. I don't know. <laughs> this is probably going to do more harm than good, but like I said before, it isn't working, so nothing to lose. I don't know whether that was picked up on the camera, but it did, it did slightly move then when I tapped it with the tweezers. It's possible I've just moved all the balls around underneath. That wasn't the intention. I was just wanting to see if the solder had melted. Um, anyway, let's let it cool down and see if we've got any more joy. Okay. Second time lucky. Nope. Okay, it's safe to say that didn't work. Oh. Oh, we've got shorts around this chip as well. I didn't, um, I didn't try that the first time, did I? But I'm guessing that's connected to the CPU. But it's not all of them. Yeah, these ones are. Well, these top ones aren't. Hmm, what does this chip do? Let's get it in the microscope and see what it is. There we go, it's the Max 7762OH chip. Um, let's Google that. So it looks like it's a chip that generates we're going to this, this is on the Tronics Fix uh, forum, I think. It generates different voltages for the SOC. Could be a, the chip that's an issue. What? The processor needs multiple stable power supplies. Hmm. Oh, kind of wish I'd have seen that first. Because it's possible that the, the GPU was okay and I've just tried to reflow it and broke it. I don't know what to do. I don't know whether it's worth trying to replace that chip. It's going to be a BGA chip though, isn't it? Which I'm probably going to struggle with. Well, I've never even replaced any chip, so... But a BGA one is going to be especially difficult, I'm sure. Let's try reflowing that. I think I can see a blob of solder here. Well, I'm guessing I've um, nudged it too much. Right, because I can see that blob of solder, I'm pretty confident that I've messed that up, so I might as well take it off now. I do have a donor board. Let's take the chip off and see if those shorts disappear. 
If they're still there, then it's obviously nothing to do with this chip. chip they've just taken off. There's a big blob of solder there. And a massive blob there. Look at all those. That's such a small chip. It's ridiculous. This is the end of my tweezers. Look how many balls of solder are under there. Ten by ten. There's a hundred solder joints there in a chip that is I don't even know like three millimeters cubed wow let's just add some more flux on there let's try and tidy those up before we test to see if the shorts have gone I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to do this because it's so small Oh, solder iron scepter, I think it's 380. Oh wow, okay. Didn't think that would work. Right, so none of those are shorting against each other. Let's see if we've still got the shorts on these components here. Yes, we do. Okay, so it probably was nothing to do with that chip. Now I probably won't be able to get it back on. <laughs> oh dear. I was going to try and tidy this up and put it back on. Don't like that big blob of solder in the top right. Gone completely now. There we go. Oh, what the hell! This is not going well, is it? I'm pretty sure I'm going to have bridges and all sorts going on under there. Don't think I knocked any of the other components off, which is good. I'll give that another clean later if I can get this working. I don't want to spend too much time messing around with it now. Um, just for the hell of it. Let's see if those shorts are still there. Yep. All right, just for the hell of it, because I know this still isn't going to be working, I'm going to try and take this GPU off 
and see if those shorts go. Because at least then I'll know whether I was right or not. <laughs> It'd be really quite annoying if it was something something else, but I couldn't see anything else. There was nothing obvious. So I'm going to try and take it off and see what happens. Wow. There's the chip. So I'll let that cool down and then I'll clean it up and then I'll just make sure there are no bridges under the microscope and then I'll check the capacitors underneath and see if we've still got shorts there. Hopefully not. That looks like it came off quite cleanly, actually. Surprisingly. None of those appear to be bridged together. Right, let's check the other side for shorts. If they're still there, I might cry. What do you know? That one's gone. And that one's gone. And that one's gone. Yeah, all the shots have gone. Thank God for that. So it was definitely that chip. Let's have a look at the chip under the microscope. I haven't cleaned this, so I still have a bit of burnt flux on it, but again, it actually looks quite clean. Big blob there at the top. There. The rest of it looks okay. So I wonder if the GPU itself has um, is actually broken down. It's uh, inside, whether it's shorted itself, or whether it just wasn't making a good connection on the board. Is there a way of testing that? I'd like to know. I'm not sure you can. If anyone knows, let me know in the comments. That's all nice and clean now. All the balls look okay. I'm tempted to try and put it back on. I mean, I don't. Pretty sure it's not going to make any difference whatsoever. But just for fun, just for a bit of practice. <laughs> it's just floating around all over the place. I'm going to add some float. I'm going to try and put it back on. It's not going to work. I know that, but I'm just, I'm just practicing. The board is is dead anyway. I'm just going to use all the other components on it for spares, so let's have a bit of fun. Right, let's do this. It's already moving. Is it supposed to move that much? I'm going to turn my airflow down a bit.
it's still moving a hell of a lot. Yeah, the way I see it now, <laughs> I'd have to be probably the luckiest person in the whole world if that's actually gone back on and all those balls have made a good a good connection and that they're in the right place because it didn't look like it was straight to me but it didn't really seem to move much either uh, once it got to a certain point so it obviously surface tension had sucked it in one way or another. I'll let it cool down, I'll clean it up making a bit of a mess around here aren't I? but never mind I'm sure it'll clean up surprise surprise the shorts are back right so we're in a the same position if not a worse position than I was when I started the shorts are still there I've possibly done more damage to the board elsewhere um, it doesn't look like I've lost any components or anything but this ribbon connector here is well it's discolored it's got a lot of heat to it um, and obviously I've tried to to swap that chip out as well on this side uh, but I think that went back on okay so let's put it back together. I mean, I know it's not going to work, but just for the sake of the video, let's put it back together and see if it does anything different. Maybe I won't get a blue screen. Maybe I'll get a green screen or an orange screen or something. I don't know. <laughs> surprise, surprise. We don't have a green screen, an orange screen, or a blue screen. It's a black screen now. <laughs> so I've obviously completely killed it. Oh, well. <laughs> it was fun All right well obviously it didn't work um i'm i'm glad i did it you know I've, I've got a bit of practice out of it it's the first time i've really taken in fact it is the first time i've taken off a bga chip off a circuit board and i've taken two off there and, and you know it it was actually went okay i think um it could have been it could have been much worse so whilst I still haven't got this working, I didn't think I would when I bought it with the blue screen. Um, you know, but I'm quite happy with the purchase for £48 because I've got, hopefully, it's got a working screen, it's got a working battery. You know, I've got some other spare bits and pieces. It also came in quite a nice, quite a nice little case, which, you know, these are like £10-15 anyway, so it's not a complete loss. I can use it as a donor board, uh, well, as a donor console. Um, you know, hopefully, if I've not ruined completely ruined the board, I might be able to use some of these other components off here as well. And everyone likes a failure, don't they? So this one was a failure. Hey! So thanks very much for watching. Anyway, uh, if you did enjoy it, please give me a thumbs up. Please consider subscribing for for some more. Can I? break things more than they were already broken videos. <laughs> Thanks very much. Cheerio.